Hey world, you're listening to The Real Rob Taylor on realrobtaylor.com. Monasteries are an extreme metal band that pushes the boundaries of the word extreme. Their EP Silence is set to be unleashed upon the world on on the 23rd of April 2021 via Seek and Strike Records. Joining us now for a special preview of two of the tracks from the upcoming EP, I'm very excited to introduce you to you. Monasteries frontman and vocalist Josh Davis. Josh, how are you? What's up, man? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, extremely well. Um, you are uh, Monasteries. Uh, I was told uh, is a Manchester band, but that's not strictly true, is it? Uh, no, we're a bit from like all over the place. Uh, I knew like 2000, like lock up is uh it's in the west we just say west midlands it's easier rather than saying where we're individually from so west midlands we'll go with cool but you were um but the the band sort of came into existence in 2013 you've had a few kind of lineup changes over that time um and uh, is it is it fair to say that it's a manchester band or is that is that also in- incorrect <laughs> we used to be a manchester band because i swear like we always used to be he was used to be because that's like where easiest for our drummer was because right. he used to live in uh, Manchester. But we'll just go with West Midlands again because okay, it's easier. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, West Midlands, it's the, that's the home of metal after all, isn't it? So, so you know, that's a, that's a that's a very good uh, pedigree that you've got there. Oh yeah, I fully agree. Like home cool. of the Black Sabbath in it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Quite right. Um, so, so tell us about the band name then. Monasteries. Uh, you know, it's where monks hang out. Um, you don't really sound like your monks. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're saying something more toilet bowl sounding, but now, like uh, I, thought, I don't think the name has like any meaning behind it. I just think because Dan's a big World of Warcraft head, or used to be. Oh, I think okay. he just saw it and was like, "That is a pretty cool name," which it I is. do agree with, especially from like a big franchise itself. Like World of Warcraft is like a game not to mess with because it's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, uh, you know this. We, uh, we, we were talking about this before, before we started uh, recording. But, um, but I'm a, I'm a total, uh, I'm a total extreme metal noob. So I'm going to ask you some, perhaps some really basic, obvious, daft questions. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I think that that's kind of. I mean, it's important because I, what I want to do, because, because I'm such a noob and I'm, I'm such a kind of, um, uh, I've got, I've got all the, the, you know, the zeal of a convert. It's been called. Um, is that you know I want to sort of out this to the world and go listen to this this is awesome so um so hopefully we're going to make this whole thing a little bit we'll, we'll lift the lid and demystify a few things and, and make this whole thing a little bit more accessible uh to the rest of the world yeah excellent um so um the track's called the, the ep's called silence we're going to listen to two tracks uh from that um the first one we've got lined up here is one minute to midnight um uh, i mean it's gonna blow everybody's brains out I mean, it's amazing but uh, all this stuff's amazing the whole EP is amazing um, but before I keep gushing about it too much uh, just give us a sort of insight into what the track's about so we kind of left the um, track like a bit of like for it to be open to, be, to like people to figure out what it's like about so like it's like pretty obvious it's like doomsday but the theme across it's just like what people what people can think of the closest thing to doomsday because obviously we've got we've had the pandemic happen mm-hmm. and obviously we've we still have like like shit things going on in the world like right now that could like lead to like that being like the end of the world hmm. whether that's like politics nuclear warfare all that kind of stuff that's what we kind of left it for and what people think is we will die eventually and all that cool okay well we'll take a listen to it after we come back from that track we're, we're going to talk about the sort of technicalities of songwriting and rehearsing and how you record this stuff because as i say you know it's uh, it, it, it's remarkable stuff and the the, the um uh, the sort of the the craftsmanship that goes into this is, is i think extraordinary so uh, let's take a listen and we'll come back and we'll talk about that this is um, monasteries from the upcoming ep silence one minute to midnight
Monasteries, One Minute to Midnight from the EP Silence that's coming out in just 10 days' time as we record this. Josh is with me, the front man of Monasteries. Uh, Josh, let me ask a noob question. How do you do that? How do you do those vocals without hurting yourself? Uh, all from the stomach, all from the diaphragm. If you use less of your throat, more of your stomach you can get. Then I think it's just like trial and error as well because... When you first start, you're not going to sound the best and you start to get a bit of sore throats and you start to get a bit like the tent there. But yeah, it's just over time, if you keep at it, keep practicing, you'll get to a point where you're happy with yourself eventually. Because like, I think I'm at a point where like I'm nearly happy with myself, but I'm not fully there. I think I can do a bit more than what I can already do. So no. we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> it sounds pretty awesome. I mean, it's a... If you've got more to give, then let's hear it. But I mean, as I say, already this uh, this sounds pretty tight. And the 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 thing that I really um, the, I mean, there's a lot impresses me about this uh, for a number of reasons. But the um, uh, you know you've got sort of uh, time signature changes in there. You've got pitch changes, not just pitch changes, but tempo changes as well. When you're, I mean, clearly you play this stuff live and you also record it and um, and you write it, uh, you know, you write the lyrics. Who, who writes the music to go with it? Do you have an idea for that? Do you write the lyrics? How does it work? Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. So I would pretty much say, like, it's an everyone thing. So there'll be pe where people, will, well, I started there. It'll be parts where, like, people will write a bit more. But then there will also be like parts where this will person a bit more. So like, we'll pretty much it'll go differently. So like Dan will like write up some drums, and then Ben and Aaron will like write guitars over it. Or it'll be like the other way around where Ben and Aaron will write guitar parts, and then Dan will restructure the uh, drums and all this, and then I'll come in like last. Cause I I think I prefer to put my parts to it when everything's all done, hmm. rather than like things having to be constantly changing, changed and stuff. Oh, that's interesting because because uh, you know it's a it makes perfect sense and um, it, you know it seems that it's a very kind of. Uh, I don't know, uh, equal process, really. Uh, you know, so if somebody, you know, if the drummer wants to lead the track, um, then yeah. then in he comes and does it. And, uh, you know, and uh, the the guitarist, we're going to hear on Digital Suicide shortly, uh, which is the second track uh, that we're going to hear from the EP. Um, but the, you know, the just the sort of, um, the punches of uh, punches of guitar and, and uh, blast beats on the drums, are, you know, are really kind of, it's a, it's a real collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been like that since uh, pulmonary failure. It was like everyone has an input on everything. Because when I joined, some of pulmonary failure was written. So like I came in, I think I wrote two lyrics, two sets of lyrics for that, which was Baphomet Eyes and Force Fed. And then like the Amicdad, the chorus was like a collaborative thing. And then uh, Silence is four out of five tracks were written by me lyrically. And then drummer Dan wrote uh, the lyrics for like One Minute to Midnight right so like pretty much everyone gets to have like a say in what they'd like to do in that yeah yeah I mean there's I think there's a risk there um, of becoming kind of um uh, you know, music by or designed by committee, where everything gets watered down and everything kind of becomes all completely wishy-washy. But that's not what that's a absolutely not what happens in your music. You know, there's a, it couldn't be further from the truth. It's you know, it's all very um, uh, everybody kind of clearly has their input, and it's almost like I mean, I guess this is one of the important things about about sort of gelling together as a band. But everybody, it feels like everybody's going kind of go, yeah, that's brilliant, do more, <laughs> you know, and and everybody <laughs> sort of will stand aside for everybody else's. Uh, uh, everybody else's moment kind of thing yeah like it's it's sick as well because uh i'm gonna say we're like majority of us are like all easily please so like whenever one of us writes something we're like extremely gas and it's cool because we all bounce off each other and we all think like this is the strongest monasteries line up today because like whenever we get to like a practice or a writing session it's just constantly so many ideas is bounce and because we carry carry the experimental with us we can kind of like go to different territories where we haven't been and um, maybe like influence us to bring in this other like obscure idea so like it's sick that we, we're like this it's sick like we all give each other like, this big driving force yeah yeah i mean and that that really comes through in the music and um 
uh, okay, well, let's, uh, let, let, there's just so many different directions I could go off in here, but um, let's, uh, let's kind of uh, listen to Digital Suicide, um, which is the, the second track we're going to hear from, uh, from the upcoming EP. Um, can you tell us a bit about that before we, uh, before we play it? So, yeah, so that track was, like, uh, probably the last one lyrically to be, like, polished and finished and stuff for the EP. But that, that track just talks about how we kind of, like, lose our, like, personal personas because when we enter the digital world, we kind of lose all, like, I'm going to say morals because some of us do lose the morals and some of us do lose, like, our respect for, like, others because social media is not a healthy thing uh, we believe it's a very toxic environment and like a lot of things can get twisted there a lot of things can be like point point at this person to be this bad guy when they're actually not so like it just talks about how like terrible social media can be and how it can affect other people's lives because like if you point blame someone for the wrong reason they're gonna lose their jobs they're gonna lose a lot of things so it kind of touches upon that subject and stuff yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. And um, more broadly as well, what, what is interesting, and we were talking about this before we came on, um, was uh, is the sort of um, the, the, the positivity, weirdly, um, of this to any outsiders. Uh, it's going to look very, you know, really, really negative and angry and miserable. Um, but that's that's really not what it's about. And and um, what we'll do is we'll listen to the track. And we'll we'll come back and we'll we'll just talk about that because because um, I think that it's a it's a really important um, as I say as, a, as an extreme metal noob. I think uh, it, it's important for me to, uh, to to sort of uncover that and and, and bridge that gap. But um, uh, let's uh, I'll stop waffling about it now. Um, this is uh, Monasteries from the EP Silence Digital Suicide.
Mighty Monasteries Digital Suicide is the name of the track from the upcoming EP Silence. Um, Josh, I believe you're staring at a load of digipacks right now. Yeah, absolutely. People can find these digipacks on the Monasteries official big cartel because we've got some we've got some tees, we've got some long sleeve hoodies, and we've got our new digipacks which have just arrived to my house that people can get get for. Awesome. So, um, so you, can you pre-order those at the moment? Yep, you can pre-order those, and these will stay on that big cartel tour after the release, as we we're going to keep them up there for people to have, that didn't get them in time. Magnificent, cool, and uh, all of these, uh, all the links to the big cartel and to uh, Monastery's website um, are going to be on the show page of the Real Rob Taylor website, just underneath the uh, the embedded. Um, uh, recording of this so um, it's not hard to find just go to realrobtaylor.com and search for monasteries and you can find everything you need there um, let's talk about that track um, Digital Suicide how many feet has your drummer got? <laughs> uh, he has one too many he needs to chill out <laughs> that that, Dan's, Dan's an amazing drummer I remember my first practice and he was just like testing his kicks out and I just thought I was like oh, Jesus Christ this is ridiculous <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I can't wait to see you guys live. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, to sort of getting involved in this um, and and this this whole new uh, this novelty for me, really. But um, but you know, you've you've got a lot of gig dates coming up. Can you just run us through those? Yeah, uh, let me get these up actually. It's like a speaker um, right in front of me. Because I know we have, I think it's like starting August on yeah, twenty eighth of August till the. 5th of September, we've got a UK tour with Gassed Up. So we're playing the places like Newcastle, Stoke, Bristol, Southampton, London, Wolverhampton, Leicester, Leeds, Manchester. And then five days after that, we're playing Guildford. And then uh, a week after that, we're playing the Netherlands. And in October 13th to the 17th, if there's any Euros listening, we're coming over to you. And we're playing Belgium, Denmark, France. Netherlands and another place I can't read <laughs> another place somewhere <laughs> else in Europe excellent. yeah somewhere else excellent well I mean it's good that you you've, you've managed to swing that and um, can, can you all right for any, any other bands listening um, you know uh, it, it, we're post Brexit now you've arranged uh, a, a European dates clearly um, you know what's the what are the hoops you have to jump through for that is it a total nightmare how does it work um, I don't think we've even begun gun the nightmare because it's oh. it's an absolute mad madness because i know it? yeah because to get over there obviously we're gonna have to pay for like new visas and stuff which is like totally fine but like apparently i could be wrong i'm kind of lost on it all mm. again at the moment because it's a lot to take in like apparently for each country we're gonna have to have like a, like, a separate visa for it mm. and obviously we'll have merch import so because we're going over a different country and we're making profit from we're gonna have to pay a bit of like import on that. So for smaller bands touring Europe and all that now is gonna be incredibly difficult. Mm. This is where like people are gonna start to need to pick up something at shows because I think the struggle is just about to get started. Unless they we haven't saw any easier way about all this as well. So we're just kinda hoping they bring something in for like touring musicians because it's just going to be absolutely horrendous yeah yeah it's going to be a hell of a lot more difficult than it used to be certainly yeah absolutely fully agree yeah yeah okay um so uh i just just want to touch on the production um uh before we uh before we sort of move onwards but um just uh just jumping back to the tracks um how do you uh, what's your kind of production process do you have do you have a producer that you work with do you have anybody mastering uh, everything separately or is it all sort of internal to the band uh so pretty much since Paul Mary failure to amygdala to silence which we're on now we've only stuck with one guy and his name is uh Mauro Slav uh, Boris I probably pronounced his name wrong <laughs> sorry Slav because we usually call him uh, Slav for sure but he works at Jigsaw audio in derby right. and we've uh, we've worked for him since porno fire and he's been nothing but amazing to us and he's just made us sound more fatter and more ridiculous than ever and i think this is uh, like our best work to date with him and that, that it really kind of shows through the value of having that external input and uh, as you say getting that um 
uh, you know, getting that ringmaster almost, you know, um, involved. So uh, so uh, they can sort of draw that out of the band as a whole rather yeah. than sort of... I, I can imagine um, within a band, uh, you know, if you've got sort of band members trying to get more out of other band members, then that can th- there could be a bit of friction involved there. So having that sort of external input um, is, is pretty important. What do, you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I fully agree because I personally would consider Slav the uh, sixth member of monasteries right like he's nothing but amazing and he he knows how to work with us as well because he's been with us for so long now even though, like it's only two eps and one standalone he's been nothing but um, incredible and we can't thank him enough for his work and his input that he's put into our releases because we come in with like an idea and he comes swinging in and polishes it all off for us Cool. Okay. And is this um, just to uh, talk about Seek and Strike Records for a moment as well? Is this your uh, your first release with them? Yes, this is our first re- release with them, and I can't wait for the future to release more with them. Excellent. And uh, just uh, can you give us a, 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 a glimpse into the future? Can you, have you got any more music coming up? Um, I can say we're always right here. I can't, I'm not going to get in depth. <laughs> I can't drop myself in that one. No, I'm not going to. All right, all right. I, I'll get, I'll, I'll get I'll a slappy up. bottom. So I can, <laughs> I, I can say, all I can say is uh, next year, hopefully we're going to be touring relentlessly and um, we're always going to be writing. So no matter where we are, we're going to always be writing. We're always going to be planning for the next big thing. It's what we're currently doing now as we speak, but I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't press that any further. I think that, but that's <laughs> that's given us a nice kind of uh, tantalising glimpse into uh, into what's yeah. coming up from monasteries. It's just monasteries aren't going to slow down. We're just going to keep going full force now. That's that's excellent, and and I'm really looking forward to everything. I'm really looking forward to getting acquainted with your with your back catalogue, actually. Uh, but you know, I'm really looking forward to everything else that's uh, that's coming up. Are you coming to Manchester soon? We are indeed. We got. Um, I think it's the fifth of September. We've got. A show with Gassed Up at the Star and Garter. Star and Garter, yeah. cool. Yeah, good venue, good venue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, 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 I, 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 you can count on me, I will be there. Sick. Excellent, cool. Josh, thank you so much for joining me and explaining uh, explaining to this new, uh, this, uh, this, this this extreme metal noob uh, exactly what it's all about and um, uh, and taking me through the my ridiculously basic questions. <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed talking me. to you. It, no, it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, uh, and uh, as I say, I'm absolutely blown away with the with the EP and really really excited about the new stuff you got coming. So uh, I will see you in September. Other people are going to get to see you uh, from August the 14th, the uh, 28th of August. You said. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's hopefully going to be uh, on the other side of any uh, any uh, uh, are we aren't we kind of uh, questions about whether uh, lockdown's going to lift and everything like that. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I wish you all the best for the future. Um, thank and, you, and uh, can't wait to see it unfold. Oh mate, thank you for having me again. Like oh, I can't wait for the future. I can't wait for shows to come back. I can't wait for people to attend, pick up some merch, and support us in the best ways. Josh from Monasteries, thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget you can find all the links you need on the show page to connect to Monasteries. Just go to realrobtaylor.com and search for Monasteries. Get on the guest list while you're there at realrobtaylor.com slash guest list. You will never miss a show. You get an email every time one comes out and a few little special goodies, hopefully, uh, as well for guest list members. Um, Subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Just search for Real Rob Taylor. Thanks once again to Josh from Monasteries for joining us in this episode. And thank you for listening. The Real Rob Taylor on RealRobTaylor.com. The Real Rob Taylor is a Reads More production. All tracks in this show are protected by copyright and have been included with the express permission of the copyright holders. All rights reserved. Play it loud.